Hi there, it's Sam from Poodlestock.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is a little purse that I'm calling a top note purse because the top part is made with a top note die. Um, my, this is my original prototype that I made and it has got a brad there to close it but I don't like it enough. Um, so I'm going to show you a slightly different way to do it but it's, oh it's such a dull day today. Hopefully you can see, there we go, if I tip it like that. This is how it opens. It's quite a cute bag. It's, it's similar to one that I made recently look there you go it doesn't want to close itself up so don't use a brad and a hole um it doesn't work but i will show you a better way to close your bag oh it really doesn't want to close at all we'll put it there and pretend it is so first thing we need we need the top note um top top note top and it's a big sty if i tilt that to try and get some of there's a vague bit of sunshine out there um it's a great great shape there's loads and loads of different projects you can make with it but because it is a big style you can run two two pieces of cardstock or even more through the big shot with it at the same time so i've got my marina mist cardstock this time this one is rich razzleberry and the polka dot parade paper and i've got the matching marina mist spotty paper there as well I grab my big shot which is here and you don't need any cutting platforms, you just need the cutting plates, the two clear ones. And you put one on the bottom, your die with your cardstock on top, and then another cutting plate, and send the whole lot through, all in one go. And I'm going to tip this, because I've sat at a very funny angle today. Move that out of the way move the oops, cutting plates as well and it's cut both of them out in one go which is great that's what we wanted but actually to get the trim round you need a pair of good scissors good quality scissors and you can probably see it better on this one there is sort of like a stitched edge that goes all the way round and there's the same on here so actually I'm going to trim all the way around this stitched edge um, and I like to use a big pair of scissors because the art of cutting, what's known as fussy cutting, is that you keep your scissors straight, but you cut the you turn the paper. So that's the art to doing it. And oops, don't get yourself tangled up. And. You know, I'm, I'm not one for hand cutting things mostly. I, I will, you know, I will use a punch if I can help it. But I love these. I love the fact that actually we've already got the guide here. On the die. And I had a look back at my starter kit recently. This was the very first die I bought in my starter kit. Look, I'm concentrating so much I can't talk properly. <laughs> There we go. So that's all cut out, which means that now I've got the border around it, which you can see there, which is obviously replicated on this one. I'm going to have to try and get this to close because it's going to irritate me otherwise. Oh, I don't know how to get it to shut. Let's use the paper pierce to try and lift that up. It was a good idea in theory using the brad, but the reality is that it hasn't worked. So at least I've made the mistake for you. Yeah, that's not closing at all. Anyway, so we know not to use that. So I'm going to put some sticky strip on the back of this. I'm not at all, I'm going to put some snail on the back of it. because so I want to stick it down and then I'm going to be scoring this at the same time as I'm scoring the bag part. Let's put that over and line it up against, obviously, the, the other sort of stitched mark that is on this one. And it's easy. Very good. Very quick, very easy. Right, let's move those out of the way so I can read my notes. The piece of cardstock that you need to make the main part of the bag is 4 by 11 inches, which is 10 by 28 centimetres. So actually you can get two um, bags from the bottom part of, you know, from uh, sorry, the two bag parts from one sheet of cardstock. Obviously, yes, you would need more for the, for the top part, but, you know, just for the bottom is absolutely, you know, plenty from there. You could even change up the colourway 
on the top part, doesn't have to be the same. But with the long side at the top, we score it at one inch, five and a quarter, six and a quarter, and ten and a half inches. And in metric, that's two and a half, thirteen, fifteen and a half, and twenty-six centimeters. And then you turn it round and we score it at one inch on one side. And then what we need to do to get this lovely, oh sorry, that's two and a half centimetres. To get this lovely mark here, bring it back round and see these bigger parts just down to about, oh, I would say the two inch mark to about here. Just score at half an inch, just part way down. You can hopefully see that. Tilt that up. There you go. So it just goes down part way. So just put your finger in at the two inch mark. So in metric, that's 1.3 centimeters. So you would come down about five centimeters. And then the same over here. And this mark is at five and three quarters of an inch, which is 14.3 centimeters. And that will give us this lovely part here, beautifully crisp finish. Because it's cardstock, you know, we don't want to risk it, it not folding correctly. And then grab a ruler, which, oh, my, my lovely steel rule's gone missing. Oh, I'm going to have to use this girly pink one. And then join up these lines from here to here to make this sort of elongated triangular part. And again, that's going to help in the close and the fold of the box, because that's, you know, quite important. So, oh, I've got to got to score this after all of that, I had the scoring tool out. This one here, we're folding it across the width, so we need to put our score line down the length of it, and you kind of just set it so that you've got equal distance, so it's all beautifully lined up, because you can't line up these knobbly bits, these lumpy bits, because actually these are, the pointed parts are higher. So you need to make sure that both parts, you know, you've got equal distances here. And then score as close down the middle as possible. Now, on this one, I am scoring it at one and seven eighths of an inch. It's not exactly on the middle. That's OK, because that bit is going to be at the front. And it's going to be so pretty. Right. Now let's come back to this part. Fold the score lines and burnish them. And ignoring these part scores, because they're going to fold in the opposite direction. Let's fold up all of those. And then come along and just pinch that part. And that will automatically, those, those diagonal lines will automatically crease themselves. Because it's a whole scientific laws of pressure or something like that kind of thing going on um, and that's why the you know, by putting the creases in first we're dictating where we want the cardstock to bend. Trim off this little rectangle at the bottom and then cut up these lines here and we need some lovely sticky strip, this time we do need sticky strip not snail I'm going to put it along this short, this edge here, close to the score line where we trimmed before. And also on this one here, not the one that's next to the sticky strip, but the one on the over on the other end and on the back of it. And I need to build this part of the bag up first before putting the top on because I need to know that the, the top is going to sit in the correct place. And if I built the box, if I stuck it on first, I wouldn't know that it definitely fitted over. So there we go. And then we now know that that is going to fit beautifully. Right. I'm just knocking my lamp over while I'm trying to reach for my magnets. <laughs> so this box, this part here, fold and burnish. This is where we bring in the liquid glue. And on one side, find the front and the back of your box. 
that's the back so I need this to stick at the back so I'm positioning the front on first and then closing it round and then holding it in place and the liquid glue means that I've got a little bit of wibble room if necessary and I'm just holding that with my fingers just to make sure it's very well stuck down and then the bag will open up like that lovely huh so I'm going to leave that there for one minute and the magnets is what I'm going to close it with I've used magnets before I will say for safety reasons please do not give magnets to very small children it's it wouldn't be good if they pulled them off inadvertently so you know maybe tie it with ribbon if you're going to give it to a child so I've taken two these are neodymium magnets eight millimeters by one millimeter and the eBay seller I buy them from is a lady called Donna and she is on eBay under the name spider magnets and she will sell all over the world so you know that you can get hold of um, these magnets anywhere so I've got that I need a couple of little circles because I want to cover up I, I want the, the magnets to not be quite so strong so I've got this little scrap where I punched out before cut off the edges before two little circles because these magnets are so very strong if if you didn't put anything between them then they would just constantly be ripping each other off another magnet on there and a glue dot and then hold and press and then I can put another glue dot on the back of this circle over here and push that on quite firmly and that will mean that my bag will close and not open up but also so that the magnets are strong enough to keep it closed but not so strong that they rip each other off all the time and look at that not a bit wasted right the flower on the front this one is made with the pansy punch I couldn't think what it was called and again I've the same spot of paper and I've cut two out. I did cut a third in the petite petals if you can see it there but actually I'm going to put a different button inside this time. These are our glimmer brads that I used before. So I'm just going to curl one of these up and I'm going to stick it flat with my mini glue dots over the top of this one. And then the buttons this time are the vintage faceted buttons and I wanted the biggest one because I love them I think they're so pretty these gorgeous buttons so one of those into the middle of the flower which is just so fun isn't it and then down at the bottom just make sure that's firmly in place and that is my little top note purse with a far better closure than the one that I originally thought of. Oh, look, it's going to close now. Ha <laughs> ha. There we go. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I hope you like this project. I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.